Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are all familiar with vacuum cleaners. These machines collect dust and keep your house clean. And all you need to do is switch it on and of course, move the holes where you want the dust to be collected. But have you ever wondered how this machine does this task? If you ever happen to look inside it, you'll find a DC motor. The DC motor is the key component of the vacuum cleaner that helps in its operation. DC motors are devices that can convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. They can be found in small toys, fans, electric vehicles, drilling machines, etc. The DC motor consists of two parts, the stator and the rotor. The stator is held stationary and it is here that magnetic poles are placed in it. These magnetic poles give a magnetic field inside the motor. The rotor consists of the armature and the commutators. The armature is wound with copper coils which are in turn connected to commutators. The commutators are a pair of half circular ring structures. The ends of the armature are connected to each of the commutators. These commutators move with the movement of the armature. For the sake of simplicity, let's take a loop of the coil. Here, we'll consider the loop of coil as the armature. The armature is connected to commutators and these are connected to brushes. These brushes are connected to a power source. Now, when we switch on the motor, current flows from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, that is, from the higher potential to lower potential. The direction of the conventional magnetic field is from north to south. If we look at the left armature arm, current is moving in the upward direction and on the right side, it is moving downwards. Now, let us consider the left arm first and apply Fleming's left hand rule. If we place the forefinger in the direction of the magnetic flux and middle finger in the direction of the current, then the thumb will give the direction of force which is acting in the upward direction. Now, applying the same on the right side of the armature, we get that the force is in the downward direction. This change in direction of the force will make the armature rotate. But just when the armature completes half a rotation, the direction of current in either arm changes. Wait, how did that happen? Take a closer look at the commutator rings. The commutator ring that was on the left has moved to the right and the one on the right has moved to the left. Now, the current moves in this direction. Now, if we apply Fleming's rule again on either side, then the right arm will be pushed down and the left will be pushed up. This keeps changing for every half rotation of the armature. Hence, the force acting on the ends changes which keeps the armature rotating. Now, if the motor is really this simple, then why does it look so complicated here? In order to increase the strength of the motor and for the smooth functioning of the motor, the number of windings is increased. Each of the armature ends is connected to a commutator. DC motors are further classified into three types, series motor, shunt motor and compound motor. In series DC motors, the armature is connected in series with the power source. They create a large amount of starting torque. However, their speed cannot be regulated and this might damage the machine if an initial load is not provided. They are used in power tools such as sewing and drilling machines. The next is the shunt DC motor. The armature is connected in parallel in the shunt DC motor. These offer great speed regulation, but they lack the starting torque that is provided by the series DC motor. Since it is possible to adjust speed, they are used in machine tools such as a CNC lathe. A compound motor is a combination of series and shunt. This is used when both a high starting torque and good speed are needed. They are used in presses and conveyors. Well, that's all about DC motors and its types. We'll see you in the next video with more interesting content. Until then, bye!